Hi, I'm Gen, and I explore social and controversial issues through both sides. Today, I'll be moderating this middle ground episode of Closeted versus Openly Queer. For anonymity, the Closeted Queer side prefers to have their faces blurred, and the rest of the cast and crew have agreed to respect their privacy. The first prompt is, coming out has a price. Can the agreeers please step forward? I grew up in a Mormon family, and being queer is not a thing. Like they say, there are no gay Mormons, just people with same-sex attraction. They won't even call it gay. It actually didn't even occur to me till I was in my 30s and I had left the church that I could be queer. And it was really, really hard. There's a huge price to pay. I was married to a man and I had three kids with him. I had to break up my family. I had to break somebody's heart that I loved that I cared for and change my kids' lives forever and my whole family. Huge price. Uh, but the only decision that I could ever make. I think it's really brave of you to take such a huge step, a huge leap to be able to be true to yourself, of Thank course. You. Um, it's something that I aspire to do one day, inshallah. I'm Muslim, so in, our, in the Islamic community, being gay is very much um, of a sin. And it becomes really hard for me to try to have open conversations with my parents because they don't know that I'm queer at all. They don't even know I'm here. So like, woo! <laughs> <laughs> also, me being first generation, it becomes a huge pressure because both of my parents, they basically traveled like thousands of miles out of their comfort zone just to give me a better life. And I think it's hard for me because I I feel like in order for me to come out, I do need to be financially stable, financially independent, because I constantly do feel like that I am owed a debt to my parents. Also, um, religious background, um, Christian parents. My parents don't know I'm, uh, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I drove out here yesterday. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it is definitely a cost, because like, all growing up, all my friends were through the church. I was a youth leader through the church. And there's always like this worry in my mind that like, if I come out, the people that I like led through the church, the parents might think differently. Like, did, did he do something with our kids? Did, was he like a, I don't know. It's just, that's always in the back of my mind. Or all these like, how will it change if they, when they see that like, cause but it's always, it's scary to see if you lose your friends. And I'm so friends. sorry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's fine. I think also, you also brought up the fact that you want to wait until you're financially stable and independent of your parents to come out and I finally have like paid my parents back. They, they lent me a ton of money helping me like buy my car. So like, I'm coming to that point where I'm like, it's scary, but I'm getting close to when I can actually tell them and come out. Personally coming out as transgender, it's had a lot of hardships. I've had to cut off family. It's made my working environments kind of unsafe or uncomfortable, but I don't regret coming out just because I feel like it can be more authentic. But really that's your journey, that's your timeline. So. You know, whenever you feel ready or if you're not ready, that's it's all good. Yeah, like I definitely like I'm I'm glad that I can finally be somewhere where like I resonate with all your guys' story. Like it's crazy because where I live, like I'm the only one. And so it's hard for me to like express myself because nobody I know feels the same way. And especially my parents as well, they're very like, Hey, a man is supposed to do this, a woman is supposed to do this. It's very like, you know, if you don't follow these like your guidelines, like we don't want it type thing. If I were to come out they'll probably like kick me out the house where I live. And so it's tough doing that for sure. Mm. What's been interesting to hear is that there's been a lot of mention around safety, not just like financial safety, but mental and psychological, as well as relationships as well. I would love to hear from you two if you guys have any advice. Um, well, I would say the fact that we even, we get to see your lovely faces, <laughs> but the audience does it, should show obviously that there's a price. I mean, if there wasn't, you'd be able to say this openly. So I just commend you for coming out here with or without your parents' permission. <laughs> <laughs> and, and just, it just felt so nice to hear all of you speaking. And I really resonated with you because I grew up Muslim. My dad is very religious. And I came out in my late 20s when I was independent and felt like if my parents disown me, then at least I'm like 28 and I have my own life and I have friends and whatever. And so I called my dad and I was like, I don't even remember what I was trying to say. I was talking circles. And he was like, oh, you're coming out. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Sir, <laughs> who taught you that word? <laughs> what, 
what is going on here? And then he was like, yeah. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and we were both kind of like, I don't know, it was very strange, because he was just like, well, you're still Khadija. And I started, Bleh. you know, <laughs> I was like, no. And I just like, I didn't realize how much I needed to hear that until I heard it. Mm -hmm. And I wish more parents realized how important their opinion of their children is. And so when they don't approve of you, when they disown you, it's like, okay, if they can't love me, who else in this world could? I love that story about your parents so much. <laughs> and my own experience of coming out, so I also uh, grew up in a uh, religious community, Christian, and I'm still part of that community. And so for me, part of the coming out journey was figuring out like, what does it look like to continue to be in those spaces? And so I kind of came out in sort of a blaze of glory. Like I simultaneously said, okay, I think I'm gonna be celibate, which was like one more thing for everybody <laughs> to have an opinion about. And I, instead of just coming out, I, I wrote a book on the subject and literally came out by taking the pre-order link to my book, posting it to Facebook and writing, dear friends, I'm delighted to announce that I have a book coming out. Also, here are a few other things you should know about me. Um, Iconic behavior. Wow. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and, and, you know, and the world went a little crazy. And there were like radio shows dedicated to proving what an evil person I was. And it was, it was kind of a, a wild time. But one of the things that was so important to me before I did that, I sat down with my parents and I was like, I think I'm gonna publish this book, How Do We Feel? And I distinctly remember, he's sitting in the back seat of the car and he's like, if people have a problem with that, screw them. And I was like, you go down. And it was one of those moments where I just realized, no matter how many people hate you after you come out, like as long as the people who matter are there mm -hmm. for you, that's what counts most. And sometimes in the process of coming out, you figure out who the people are who matter most. And yeah, when people start to love the real you, that's often a lot more important. Mm. It's hard to feel loved by someone who doesn't know that you're queer. Um, just a little background about me. I'm actually Mormon and I'm going to school currently at a church school. So I do feel like, I don't know what to call it. I don't, I wouldn't say like fully love, but I do feel like people like to be my friend and hang out with me. But if they knew this information about me, would they really love me? Would they really be there for me? Mm. It's just hard to have that always in the back of your head. Do you have someone at the university that knows about this? Yeah, so I have about like, my three friends in my posse. One of them is my sister and one is my cousin. Mm. Um, so just having them there has been a huge help. Um, they weren't always there, so um, just reflecting on that time is, is hard. It was very uh, suicidal time for me. And it was down to that um, idea of like suicide come out. So when you were feeling that way, did you, is that when you told someone? Yeah, I had like a meltdown. It was kind of crazy, um, but I finally came out to my sister and she just gave me a hug and it was like probably the best hug I've ever had in my life. Aww. Yeah. Well, that's beautiful. Curious if you have had any similar experiences. Yeah, I mean, I'm a coming out coach, so I help people <laughs> come out. You know, you say that it's hard to feel fully loved, and I totally relate to that because you aren't your authentic self. But what I've realized is that when people don't approve, it's not actually about you at all, it's about them. Because you are just being more of yourself. It's not like a shameful part of you, it's, it's a beautiful part of you. And so people who know you and love you will continue to know you and love you unless there's some part of them that's making them shut that down. If they, they have, you know, they're raised in the same heteronormative society as you. So when you do come out, if anyone isn't accepting, it's not about you at all. Yeah. And your relationship with your parents? Since My parents, they don't oh. Know? Yeah. <laughs> they don't know I'm here either, so. <laughs> oh. Yeah. I think we have a lot of things yeah. in common here. Children <laughs> are bad. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Do you, do you ever find yourself trying to predict like how people would respond if you came out mm. to them? I feel like before I came out, it was like everybody had like a little percentile hovering above their head where I would be like, you're like an 87% chance it'll go okay. Oh you're like God. a 30% chance, like this is bound to tank. And I feel like that act of trying to predict like, how's this gonna go was part of the stress even for me of being like, I don't know how much you love me because that percentile keeps changing. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's for me, it's, 
kind of like that, also kind of like a dating simulator where you have like the three different options, like what <laughs> you could say. And it's not like that, like, oh, I'm like, predicting these things. I have like actual like evidence-based research kind of thing because I have family friends who are openly queer. One of my family friends, he's very much more flamboyantly queer, but my mom would always be like, you see that? The <laughs> nail polish, that makeup, why he's going to hell? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> if I may ask, what percentage would you assign to your parents? Oh, that's hard because my mom is like openly homophobic. My dad is like silently homophobic. Um, <laughs> right? It do be like it that. It do be like oh. that. So my parents were like 100% Mormon in the church when I came out. And they're not anymore. Wow. Ooh. And they're in their 60s. And they've spent their whole life in the church. When I came out, my dad went to his leader at the church like far up and he said, listen, my daughter is probably going to get married to a woman and that's apostasy. That means she's willfully going against the church and she won't be with me in heaven. He's like, that just doesn't work for me. Mm. I can't see a heaven, a place I would wanna be without my daughter. And that was the thing that allowed him to really question, do my values align with this organization that I contribute to, that I support, that I volunteer, that I give my life to? I never in a million years <laughs> would have ever believed they would leave the church. But you know what? Their love for me and, and the, the foundation that we built, they knew who I was. And I did not become a different person when I came out. And I'm remarried to a woman now. And my, thank you. <laughs> we have seven kids together because wow. we popped out the babies like the Mormon <laughs> oh moms God. that we were bred to be. A queer she, yours, she was, mine, and ours. Yeah, oh Brady Bunch. <laughs> Five <laughs> boys, <laughs> two girls. At my wedding, my little brother gave a speech and he said, Lena, I'm so happy to meet you. Sally, it's, it's great to finally meet you. Aww. Like he saw who I really was now that I was able to be my full self. You know, it was just so beautiful to feel that, that love fully myself and to have all those people there supporting me. And it, it is possible. And I'm not saying it's gonna happen for you. I'm not saying your parents will for sure leave the church, but you will find those people who will be your chosen family. A lot of queer people have chosen family, right? Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful. Can we get the disagreeer stuff forward? My family is very like, we're like a small gang <laughs> in the sense that like we do everything together. And so I feel like even though they don't know like who I really am, I feel like they still love me for what they know. I kind of agreed with that. That's why I, I kind of disagreed. Although hearing all of your stories, I kind of changed my mind actually. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> the reason why I disagreed initially was more of, well, they don't know, so it's hard. But I guess if I look at it through my perspective, then yeah, because I'm not offering my full authentic self, so how can they love me fully, like similar to what you were saying. So I, I, I changed my mind, so thank you all for that. <laughs> <laughs> so I disagreed, um, mainly because I feel like I don't really have to change myself. Like, I am who I am. I don't really change my behavior around my parents or around my friends. I'm out with my friends. I'm out, out at school, just not, not my family, not, not like people back home. But I don't really, this is just how I am. Like, the one thing is with my parents, I don't uh, like bring up relationships. They always ask me like, when you get a girlfriend, when you get married, when you have kids. And so like, I, I, I can't like say, even though they don't know uh, that I like men, I, I can't say that they, did, that they don't want me fully because they've done everything for me. So I really love what you said about like your parents still really deeply loving you without knowing that you're queer. And I guess I was just wondering like, for you, is there any sense of that lingering question with your parents of like, but would they still, but what if, and how does that shape the way you experience their love right now? That's a good question. Um, I don't really know. I, you said the percentages earlier. If my dad would be more like a 70 to 80, uh, being like accepting my mom, I'm more worried like a 40 to 30, but I can't see them disowning me. I can't see them. I think the worst that I could see with them is just like loving me because I'm their son and they've raised me, but not like, not agreeing with my, my choices on that. Um, but I, I, I wholly believe that they still love me. Mm. My sexual identity is in anyone's business.
You should cut off people who don't accept you. We all were like, because <laughs> I agree to the extent that like, I'm obviously speaking from a place where I'm able to be independent and I know that I can, I know that I can handle myself. It's a place of privilege. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm like, I am 31. I like live in a different city from my family, but I also am a kind of person that we tend to treat family, like blood family, like it's the end all be all, like they can never do anything wrong. It's some of the most toxic dynamics ever and you're expected to just stay or you're expected to keep giving that person access to you. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, have you guys ever had to cut anybody off? Uh, you, yep. I kind of agree with you. I'm like more 50-50 of, you can cut them off, but if you think that they have the capacity to change or that they do, mm -hmm. you have to give them that space because I've also had family where I've cut them off temporarily, given them that time to kind of step back and educate themselves a little bit. And then after a couple of years, I actually had a cousin who came out as a lesbian and has had a girlfriend for a bit. And that was kind of the thing that got them to change their minds. And so actually over the holidays, we were able to mm -hmm. see each other again for that's the first amazing. time. That's amazing, so happy for you. Thank you. And it, but I also know that's a privilege for a lot of people. Yeah, totally. And, and that's saying a lot about you that you allowed them back in your life. Mm -hmm. Like you are showing a lot of grace and understanding by, you know, respecting yourself. But I, I also respect that you were able to take that space. It, in, in my, you know, situation, I no longer have obligatory relationships. In the church, mm -hmm. I was raised to show up and be friends with everyone because it's the right thing to do. It's Christ-like. And now I am done with that. If I can feel that they don't fully love me and, and accept me, then I'm not willing to put myself in that situation anymore. I value myself. I know there are lots of people that will help me feel safe. And I know that's a, a privileged place to be in, but I hope that for everyone. I just, it's hard to cut people off because like, I have a lot of like really close friends that are like, in the church who wouldn't agree with my lifestyle right but it's still very hard because we grew up with each other and we grew up together and it's just like it's hard to you know just cut somebody off from your life that you knew all your life and it's just like a piece of you goes away so that's the only reason why i disagree i guess kind of there seems to be two schools of thought when it comes to family it seems like family shouldn't be an obligation whereas <laughs> it seems like no matter what family is family what do you two think about that mm -hmm. um this could just be the church and me talking, but um, my family is like everything to me. And on top of that, relationships, people that matter are very important. Um, I actually went through kind of a situation where I had to cut somebody out of my life. It was a mix of like different things of how I identified, um, who I was dating. Um, and that was just a really hard experience for me. And I, can, I can't say whether it was a better thing for me or a worse thing for me because I still reflect on that even to this day of like what did I do wrong in that situation and it's like to me cutting people out of my life is something personally I don't want to do but I do recognize why other people would want to do it but I think just with what I've experienced it's been worse for my mental health and working through that has been a journey in itself. When you were saying the guilt you feel around those things and has it helped or hindered that I felt for you because I have been working on self-compassion a lot. And when you grow up in a religious background, you're not taught to be self-compassionate. You're taught yes. to <laughs> just destroy yourself <laughs> at all costs because you were never gonna be the perfect vision of a religious X, Y, Z. So if I would offer anything, it would just be to give yourself a bit more grace and compassion of like why that relationship ended because it's not that you, like it ended for a reason. And that comes with time and trusting yourself more. And that takes time to develop. It's a really irritating muscle to develop. <laughs> <laughs> I know you announced yourself with like a bang, right? As you, as you put it. Um, how did that go? Did you have to cut anyone off? I, so I, there were some relationships where certainly the, the final conclusion of that was people saying to me, like, I've decided to cut you off. Um, and, and so, I mean, I didn't have a choice in that matter. Like I had to be willing to receive that. Um, but I think 
I think I have, I have so much conviction that the only way to really love people as radically as you possibly can is to sometimes take the risk of being hurt mm -hmm. and to trust uh, that you will be loved more than you will be hurt. Um, and so I think I've chosen to let myself be hurt sometimes in hopes that my presence in the world can have a net gain of more <laughs> love in the world than there is hate. Did you receive any specific examples of hate when you did come out? <sighs> yeah, I mean, everything from like the very public, the online, the whatever, you know, hate mail and so forth, which is a real thing. I'm not sure I, I'm not sure I knew what it would feel like to receive it until I did. Um, but I think the ones that were more painful for me were the ones that were much more personal. Mm -hmm. You know, the people who I was like, I've spent Christmases with your house. Like I hung out with your kids. There was nothing sketchy about me until you suddenly realized that I was just not the person you imagined that I was. That was really hard Even to have people whose our lives were so embedded that I still had like things to remind me of them. And I'm like, oh, this knife is a gift I got from you and I'm still using it to cut my onions while I weep. Um, <laughs> like, I, yeah, I had some of, those, some of those relationships that I had to figure out how to process. Yeah, and, and it, it was hard, it sucked. I couldn't see myself being on the other side today. I definitely couldn't personally just because I spent so much time in the closet just like in my teens and just had it slowly like chip away at my mental health and my well-being that I could never go back to that. I felt so terrible about myself. I felt almost kind of guilt too of, you know, my family not really knowing such a good chunk of me and what was going on. And even after I came out, some family members voiced out of like, you know, I wish you said something sooner because I wish I got to know the real you earlier on. Agreed, yeah. Once I realized what had been going on my whole life, I couldn't unknow that, and I can't live a lie. I had a split second where I thought about putting it back in and pretending and moving to another, because the reason I figured out I was gay is because I fell in love with my now wife. We were like mom friends and our families were hanging out together, and I realized that I had more than friend feelings with her, and yeah, I, I dropped the babysitter off and I had a, like my first panic attack because I thought I was going to have to move away and never see her again. And I was just distraught. I could not live like that. I would be miserable. Do you feel like you guys have had to make up for lost time or you weren't able to express yourselves fully? <laughs> we made up for lost time. It's like a teen, you're like a teenager again when you like rediscover your like attraction and then you make some weird decisions. I'm telling you, music was made, everything sounded so much beautiful. I'm like, now I get these lyrics. Yes. Colors were more vibrant. It was like seriously like a movie. I could not hook up with people one night stands, I used to say like, that's just not for me. And then I slept with a woman and I was like, what? Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's like a whole new world. Uh -huh. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I can see myself um, because that's like coming out um, at some point is kind of like what I want to do in the near future or future. I can't say near at the moment, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I'm just not ready for it, um, emotionally, financially, or otherwise. I have a question for us on this side. How different do you think your life would be if you were out? Like, what, what is the other side for you? Like, how would that look for you? I think for me, um, because I talked about how there are times in which I feel like my, the, my parents' love for me can feel conditional, even though I know it's not. If I were to come out and if they were to be accepting of that, then I would have that relief that fresh breath of air that I don't have to keep on second guessing. I don't have to keep on thinking like, okay, I need to present myself like this, make sure that I say the right things because if I slip up one thing, then it's gonna cause other ways and stuff. Like I don't have to think much about that anymore. So it's gonna be a lot more freeing in that sense. I don't think it'll be too much different. I feel like I, what I like now and like what I like when I'm out would be the same thing. You know, I like pizza. I like, you know, I like different, I think it, in the sense that like, I would still be the same person out just, I. You just know that I like men, that's it, that's it. I also want to say, so this year, um, this past summer, like in June, I went to my first, uh, I went to a Pride event in Denver, and like, I walked in and I just started to cry. Like, Aww. just, it was just so great seeing like all this like love and support of just from everyone. And like, it just really made me like, uh, if I, 
I just want. I just can't wait to like, be on the other side. So like, it's because it's, it's always there. Like it's always in the background when, when I'm with the parents and, and bring about relationships and all the dating and stuff. And it's just it's always there. And it just be nice to not have that hanging over. So you were one of the only uh, openly queer people to step forward. I'm on the disagreeing side. I'm curious what your thoughts are. Yeah, I guess. So for me, when I chose to come out, it was a very like Robert Frosty and two roads diverging in a wood kind of moment where I felt like I could sort of see down both paths and be like, oh, I think I can envision like, here's what my life le might look like in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. I had written this book manuscript and I was like, I either burn this thing or I publish it. And if I burn it, I stay closeted. And if I publish it, I come out. I feel like I had a long conversation with 12 year old Greg and 12 year old Greg was like, I would have killed to like read this book and feel like I wasn't alone. And I was like, okay, I don't, I don't even know if I want to come out for me, but I want to come out for 12 year old Greg. Mm. So that I think, I think because I spent so much time trying to envision what life might be l like if I never came out, I feel, I feel a lot of compassion for that imaginary sense of myself too. Even though I have to say, I'm tremendously grateful uh, that that is not me. I'm so much less worried about what people think about me because I've stopped, I've stopped trying to control what people think about me. The pain of doing nothing was less than change, it seems like. That's kind of what got you to go to the other side. I think, I think it was the question of which pain felt more meaningful. Mm -hmm. Like there's gonna be pain in the closet and there's gonna be pain out of the closet. And so the question is not what's the path that doesn't have pain. The question is like, which is the pain that is beautiful and meaningful. Mm -hmm. So like everyone remember me asked me like if you like feel all of this like what makes you like want to be celibate? Oh, for me, uh, celibacy is so much about if I'm really convinced in this Jesus guy, then I want to figure out like what his invitation is for my life. And so celibacy is my best understanding of what it looks like for me to be faithful to the way I understand Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, and I recognize, I mean, I've got dear friends who disagree with that understanding of Jesus or just dear friends who are like, ah, I'm not into the Jesus guy. And like, I love both of those sets of friends. Um, but yeah, if, if, if following your heart is ultimately about finding the thing that you're most deeply in love with and mm -hmm. saying like, I'm gonna do what it takes to be with that person I'm most deeply in love with. I just feel like I'm kind of obsessive about Jesus. Mm. You're making a face. <laughs> this is a hard one for me because uh, I grew up loving Jesus. Would your idea of a loving, kind, older brother, savior, want you to miss out on mm -hmm. romantic love and a partnership and having what everyone else gets to have, but you don't get to? What, what's the deal? I think I probably, I, I felt more of that anguish, I think, uh, earlier in my journey when I was more convinced that being married or like being in that kind of romantic relationship was going to be fundamentally, definitionally better, more fulfilling, like more full of love. But I, I increasingly have found within singleness and celibacy a lot of the things that I think I'm most thought I wanted out of marriage. So like, like this Valentine's Day, I got to spend with like some of my dearest friends. We, we all got dressed up together and we had like a romantic dinner, if you will. And then we had a dance party in the living room. And I was like, this is like, this is not the family I was maybe picturing for myself at some point, but like, this is family. Like this is love that's maybe even better than the kind of love that I thought I would get. So, so why is it that you, your family has to be the community family and not the relationship family, like the single partner. Yeah, I, I think in my own heart, I tend to think of it less as obligation, like here's how it must be, and try to more receive it as a gift, like here's, here's the particular thing that I get to have. But why do you think Jesus doesn't want you to be with anyone? Oh, oh, that gets into... Because Bible says homosexuality is a sin? Mm. Are you trying to avoid saying that? No, I, I would definitely... Uh, I, well, number one, I hate trying to understand what the Bible says with the word homosexuality, because I think there's a whole lot sure. wrapped up in that. Yeah, a lot. Um, uh, but yeah, so I definitely wouldn't say homosexuality is a sin. I mean, I, I understand myself to or be gay, and I don't think I'm on sin. It. I would say homosexual relations. My understanding is that sex belongs exclusively in 
uh, marriage context. Okay. And and not even not even necessarily all that all sex within that marriage context is good. So in that sense, I'm remarkably conservative. So around you sexual think practice. that sex outside of a man and a woman who are married is wrong? I don't think you're saying. No, that. no, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let him answer. Let him answer. Yeah, I, I think I think for followers of Jesus, I would say that's not what Jesus is asking his followers to wow. do. Wow. But again, I recognize not everybody's trying to follow Jesus, or some people are, and their understanding of Jesus would be different from mine. But would you say that if you were to find um, another man who you would have romantic relationship, would that ever be a possibility for you? Oh, yeah. I I wouldn't see uh, same-sex marriage as being a possibility for me. Yeah. You wouldn't? I wouldn't, yeah. Why, so do you think people who don't believe in Jesus are wrong? I, I think, I think all of us, I hope all of us have things that we hold with deep conviction and think people who disagree with us are wrong, but I also think we should hold all our opinions with the intellectual humility to say, I too could be wrong. So you do. <laughs> Wait, so, okay, I'm sorry. Well, I'm confused. Confused. That a little bit. You do, you do think it, it's wrong, but you could be wrong that you think we're wrong. Correct? Yeah, I think, yeah. I, I think, I believe that Jesus is so beautiful that I would love it if everybody were following him, but I don't think I'm supposed to ob obligate everybody to do that. I like, I like what you're saying. Like, I mean, I, I, I like your perspective on because you, you truly believe that it's, wrong, which I might disagree with, but not trying to oppose it on others. Like you're keeping it to your, yourself and you think like you not would Not until rather... we're dead and in heaven. <laughs> then it will be imposed on <laughs> us. If heaven's real. Because <laughs> Jesus will be there yeah. and is that, is that a fair we will all be Christian. I just want to put it out there. Um, well, I've seen a lot of religious people say the same thing and they're saying like, oh, like, no, like being gay is a sin, but like, I still love you as a person. So you can still be who you are and stuff. That still discounts the person and their identity because you can respect them as much as you can. But if you still think that they're going to like burn in hell or not be in the way of God, then that's just going to be, then that's not really respecting because then what is this respect that you're trying to give as well? It's the whole love the sinner, hate the sin. I, I guess so, yeah. but then at the yeah. Do you guys have something to say that? I, I openly have trauma and anger around this issue. Mm. Mm. People have committed suicide. Uh, the highest rate of teen suicides is in Utah. And I cannot ever get behind the idea that someone that loves you is going to tell you that loving someone else and doing what you're biologically built to do and you're not harming anyone else is wrong. I think that is abusive. Mm. I, I too am deeply concerned about suicide among queer people. Um, I'm deeply concerned about the messages that exist, I think especially in religious communities. And so I think for me, recognizing that not everybody's going to have a journey like mine, recognizing that not everybody's going to have convictions like mine. I think one of the reasons I hope, I hope that there's value in somebody like me also being out is that it just provides a bit more sense of the range of like, there's a lot of kinds of queer stories, like queer people are not monolithic. Um, and there are a lot of ways within which you can be loved, you can experience love as a queer person. The way you're living your life inherently tells people that that's what you think, that that's what's okay and what's not okay. So you, you saying celibacy is what Jesus wants and I don't believe in, I think Jesus doesn't want two people to be married who aren't a man and a woman, then you're telling kids that getting married to the, their same gender or having sex with someone, a queer sex, is wrong. Well, so would you then say that me wanting to be a follower of Jesus is wrong? I'm saying that choosing cel celibacy isn't wrong, but I don't respect the belief that sex outside of the, the, your context is okay. I do not believe that's okay. Can I just get clarification, sorry, on, because <laughs> I'm mad confused. Okay, 
So, because I think I initially was approaching it from a non-religious perspective and just mm. thinking, okay, as you were saying, queer people come in many different shapes and sizes, forms. Purely religious. Some might be ace, romantic, whatever. So for you, it's a purely religious perspective and your views on marriage in terms of queerness. What? Sorry, I just wanted clarification. My understanding is that sex belongs, for followers of Jesus, belongs in marriage. Um, in marriage to a man and a woman. And, and yeah. so that's, for you, the religious reason of why you've chosen to be celibate and... Right, yeah. right. I, yeah, I am not interested in a marriage with a woman, so I chose not to be in one. Okay. So that's, yeah. These are the exact conversations that, when I was referencing, like, my, these conversations come up with my parents, and it makes me shut down and, like, back up. It, these exact conversations with it, with, like, if you're in the church, you don't get love. I mean, you, you don't get you don't get uh, romantic love with a partner. You you just have to stay celibate. You have to accept the community from the people around you. You, you, don't, you can't have a family like a, a family with your own kids. You you're celibate. You're single for the rest of your life. This is clear. The the, the Jesus is never going to change his mind. Like gender is pivotal and vital to Christianity patriarchy, uh, the priesthood, all of that. If you don't have gender binaries, there is no, the Christianity falls to its face. So it's, it's never going to change and it's giving false hope. I need to change both your guys' batteries real quick before you start that. Sorry, yes. Me? Yeah. Who is I think me. I think me. Yes. That's great. That's great. You found the real issue. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I I like what Jack said earlier about everybody's journey being their own journey. Uh, and I think I uh, I both don't want to try to impose my journey onto anybody else. And I think, I also think there's value in us recognizing that queer experience is not monolithic um, and just leaving room for people to have different convictions to, to think that one another are wrong. I mean, I hope that Sally thinks that I'm wrong. Um, I, I do. Mean, yeah, Definitely. you do. <laughs> um, so uh, if, if we can, if, if we're inevitably going to at times think that each other are wrong, then I think the question is like, what does it look like for us to continue? Can we continue in, in a way that is still in relationship with each other? And I hope the answer is yes, um, especially uh, for queer folks who wanna try to support one another. I think it, to me, it feels hypocritical um, to hold your beliefs and also claim everybody's journey is fine and right because you don't believe that. Yes, you can say you respect everyone's journey and their timing and whatever, but then at this, in the same sentence, you say that this is what's right. It can't, you can't have both. Is that fair? I, I, think, I think we all have an understanding of what's right. Uh, and I think the only, the only way to love people and support other people on different journeys is to recognize they're going to have a different sense of what's right than we do. Um, so if we're, if we're going to love across difference, I think we have like to. I feel like the point Last thoughts. is we, I mean, in Christianity, you, you believe that the ultimate truth is the Bible and is what Jesus is saying. That is, that is the ultimate truth. So saying you believe other people have different ideas of what's right and what's wrong, what's good and what's bad, ultimately you believe, regardless of whether or not you, what, if we believe it's okay, if obviously Sally believes it's okay, um, but like regardless of that, you ultimately believe that it's not, that it's wrong. For ultimately. everyone. For everyone. You just. Not just you. I, I, think, I think I believe it's not what following Jesus looks like. And following and Jesus is the right to, way. I believe people for get everyone. to choose whether or not they want but to follow Jesus. But it is Jesus. right for everyone. If they were choosing the right thing, it would be to follow Jesus. I think it's what we're designed for. I think it's Boom. where we find the most beauty and the most joy. The truth. Let's move on to the next problem. I've done both. I accept myself. <laughs> I'm, 
so proud of myself. I'm like, wh how, wh where I'm at, where I've gone through. I'm in med school. I guess that was my dream. I uh, have a great community of friends, people who accept me for who, everything, everything about me. Looking forward to finding someone who can accept me too. Um, but yeah, I, I do accept myself. Me as a person, I'm very comfortable with me being bisexual. Throughout my life, like I've gone through like a lot of challenges. Elementary school, middle school, high school, they've all been a lot of like lonely moments. And I think it's especially because that I've gone through all these obstacles and stuff. And the fact that I'm still standing to this day that I'm really proud of myself. Mm. And just like really appreciative that I can truly say I'm accepting myself. Even though I'm like still in my closet and everything and stuff, I, I still love myself a lot. So, you know. Seems so. like you came a long way. Yeah, I have. And I had a lot of amazing people to help me out too. My high school friends, because I'm like, hey, yeah, I can't tell my parents, but at least I can tell you guys, right? Aww. So I have people that love me just as much as I love them and love myself. Did any of you guys almost not come today? I know some, I think a lot of them, the closeted side, haven't told anyone, right? <laughs> I kept on replaying, to, like, because I kept on thinking to myself, like, is this real? Am I actually going all the way to LA? Am I really doing this alone? That's crazy. This is not real. I'm not here. <laughs> um, so yeah. I, I want to ask uh, people on the openly queer side, do you think you can accept yourself fully if you haven't come out yet? I think you can because it's like, coming out is a lot about other people and having to tell other people that I feel like it's kind of more an internal thing to accept yourself, whether you're closet or you're not and how your identity is and how you, you know, present yourself, that can change over time. Let's bring the disagree, please. The one. <laughs> the one. I didn't say I didn't accept myself, not to say I don't love who I am, but I feel like personally saying I accept myself now is saying I don't want to progress further into some big goals I have, like coming out to my family, coming out to the world, being able to have relationships. So you view accepting yourself as coming out fully? Yeah. I've had a lot of like skewed uh, versions of myself that I've had to put out at different times, like essentially masking myself to the point where I don't even know who I am. Mm. Um, so I think it's important to go on that own self-discovery journey, and it sounds like a lot of people have. Um, and I do feel like I'm still very early on in it. Um, so saying I accept myself fully isn't entirely something that I would feel like defines me. Obviously each individual case is different, but I'm curious to hear from the openly queer side. Do you guys see yourselves in them before you guys did decide to take that step? Yeah, religious uh, upbringing, it's just like based on fear, based on guilt and shame. Like that's the whole thing. So it's hard to undo that conditioning. It's hard to feel accepting of yourself when you know that you have a lot ahead of you to change, right? Yeah. And we all make mistakes. You know, I'm not a perfect person. I haven't done this whole process perfectly, but learning how to find that grounded, loving space within myself, not attached to anyone else's opinions or ideas has been my journey. And it's, it's I feel like, the purpose of my life is to learn how to feel alignment within myself. And I think it's beautiful that you can have the awareness that you're not in alignment, that your insides don't match your outsides, and that that's something that you want to change and that you're working towards that. And that, that in itself is uh, a beautiful awareness that will bring you more joy as you move forward. Yeah, I, uh, I know for me, part of what's been really important in my own journey of self-acceptance is learning to accept like younger versions of me too. Like that there's a big difference between being like, I'm okay with myself right now and being like, oh, and I'm also okay with the way I felt about myself when I was 10. Like, I, or, or the way I felt about myself when I was 13 and totally freaking out about being gay. Uh, I think it's been easier for me to be okay with my adult self than it is to look back at younger versions of me and be like, oh gosh, that kid was going through it. That kid was having some trauma, but I love him too. Um, maybe not but, but makes it sound like a contradiction. Like, and I love him all the more. I mean, maybe there's beauty in that, that you can totally accept yourself right now and also say, yeah, in five years, I'll be in a different place and I'll look back on this version of myself as I was sitting under those lights and be like, <laughs> I like that person. They're cool. 
Any last closing statements from either side? I think, I think something we've talked about, we're all on our own journeys. We're all in different stages. Some of us are only see coming out as a far future distant thing. Some of us are still working on accepting ourselves. I'm so close to coming out, I, th I think. Um, but it's just it's been so cool to hear everyone just speak about their stories and how, like, how they've been brought up, their religion, their parents, their fa friends and family has brought them to where they are. And it's just been so cool to hear you guys. So thank you. Either you or anyone else on the closeted side has this experience today pushed you even further to want to come out? Or has it changed your mind in any in instance, I your perspectives? It's, it's helping me get ready. Like, I, I, it's, it's coming <laughs> so soon. <laughs> I'm like, I, I, I'm so close. <laughs> I just, just need to figure out how. I haven't really been able to share my thoughts and opinions um, because of the space I've been in, the people I've been around. So just being here has been, in a way, very healing. This interaction showed me, like, what my life could be after you know it showed me like you know there there's there is like more life to than just like what i am right now so definitely just the question i just have to ask or want to ask um do any of you guys do feel comfortable of getting rid of the blur if not <laughs> oh obviously gosh. no pressure <laughs> this is, i have been I thinking know. about that <laughs> is that gonna oh, be your debut? So that'd be a good coming out story y'all <laughs> Oh, oh my so god. Cool. That would be so cool. I just want to be clear, I there's no I know. No, 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 no. I've been wanting to, and I, I have been thinking about that, like, since you guys said, said uh, to come here, um, I was like, should I use my name? Should I not? Should I? When does this, when does this come out? Like, when, when, when yeah. would this? Couple weeks. Couple weeks? I think it should just come out in your own terms. Because I want, no, no, I, yeah. I know, I, I'm ready. My terms are, I want, I, I don't want my parents to find out from like a video like this, yeah. but ah, yes. you're ready to in the next couple of weeks. That's what I'm thinking. If, I, if I'm in the next couple of weeks, if I can tell them, you don't have to. Don't blur me. Don't blur. Don't blur my. Don't blur my. Don't don't blur my face. Yeah. What? <laughs> Hell yeah. How do you How do you feel? Uh, just the next step is have to tell them that. <laughs> <laughs> any Any closing statements from you? Um, it's just been really cool. That, uh, I said earlier, it's just cool to see everyone's journey and like just seeing the other side just makes me feel like I'm just ready to join that other side and not have to have that thing hanging over me whenever I'm with my parents. Do you feel like a weight off your shoulders? I haven't done it yet. <laughs> <laughs> but it will be. Yes, it will be a weight off my shoulders once, once I do the I'm do tell them. Wow. I'm really proud oh, of you. Wow. <laughs> Um, well, thank you guys. Uh, this was a great episode. If you guys want to embrace, shake hands, please do something. <laughs> oh, we're not doing group hugs. <laughs> <laughs> we're not doing oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, Come over. Oh, oh good girl. No. I can not. No, I can not agree or respect right. your beliefs, but I can still respect Listen, you as a person. You, know right what I mean? you. Yeah. I have love for you. Yeah. Right back at you. She's right the best. Right. Okay. Yeah.